We got in a dribbly 1086. It appears as though the high side of the TA is not functioning correctly. Uh, you move the lever ahead and nothing happens. The low side is holding, but uh, anyway, put a gauge on it. Goes in the bottom of the MCV. It's nice and dark, you can barely see, but it goes in that port. That's how you can uh, check your pressures. This was reading at about 250, 260, something like that, which tells me the MCV is working uh, correctly. There's no leaks in the MCV. Uh, it's more than likely what's going on is a bunch of burnt clutches in the TA. Taking the wiring off. Gonna take the fuel lines off. Take the starter out. Welcome to the cockpit. I'm gonna take some stuff apart. Taking apart an assortment of things there. Cooler lines here, get them off. Watch that one so I know where it goes. I'm about ready to take the MCV off. Not all these bolts are the same length. I'm gonna make sure I put the correct bolt back in the correct hole. And the time is Progress is going to have to come to a halt. Going to need to have a funeral service. Another one to the bucket of oil. Fantastic catch.
as you can see up to this point we've had mediocre to fairly great success we got our transmission on the stand ready to roll away one bolt left on either side the majority of the jumbled mess is detached looks like it's hanging on looks like it wants to but it's not got our bottom cover off uh, right now would be a good time to take our that shaft out not gonna Driven gear here, holding on, not wanting to let go. Gonna have to though. We will not take no for an answer. Shit's still kind of hanging on. And go to this side. Try to find out what's making us angry. Uh huh. That kebab right there. That's the fucker. I'm not sure who the brilliant man or woman or whoever, animal, whatever you may be, decided to put that bolt there on the bracket. You could have moved it half an inch ahead so I could get it out. Uh, I don't know if I could send them a message. I'm sure they're dead by now, but if I could send them a message, it would be uh, Fuck you. After cursing the anonymous's, anonymous's engineer's name for the last several minutes, we are back on track. Readjusting our chain. Looking everything over. All looks fairly well. Very close to very well. And we're gonna proceed. It really doesn't take, take this long. One thing a guy can do if he so wishes is to take a bolt, a couple washers, very big washers, and thread them into
the back of the TA shaft that'll keep the quill housing and the TA all together. It really doesn't matter when you're taking it apart because it's all got to come apart anyway, but just makes you not feel like as much of a moron when you take it apart and everything falls apart under the floor. Surprisingly, that's how I choose to do it. Taking those two bolts out, there's a snap ring there with a wood rough key pulling the shaft to that arm or collar, whatever you want to call it. And then the shaft will come out. And then there's three bolts here, here, and here on the PTO drive gear housing. I'm gonna take those out, and then I'm gonna take that cover off, come yonder to this side, take that nut off, and then I'm going to put my puck in the shaft and drive the shaft out, and then take all the lower speed gears off. Woodruff key out. There's also two wood roof metal keys in here. Whatever. This heavy ass dinkus on here is not assisting me in many good ways. belts back in. One thing that is kind of funny is that these four bolts here all have like little nylon pellets in them. So Make sure, I'm going to make sure I put the right bolts in the right, in the right hole. Got pretty worn splines here, so that will be getting replaced. Now 
Next, you just line your hammer up right on the threads and just start smashing it. Actually, advise not to do that. Whoa! China needs to get better at making their tripods. So this is the quill that I'm going to pull off here. I always check the splines on the quill. You can see that one's He's been abused. So, take this out. I think this there. There goes that. Then up top here is the clutch pack. And it feels Height. Actually, I should bring it up to the bench, but oh my goodness, definitely not tight. So just as we thought, the clutch packs are toasted. This one has a three clutch discuses, 
We'll put in a heavy duty, which we'll have four, but that would be why when you move the lever forward, nothing was engaging because it was impossible if you had low pressure. One of the reasons could be if it wasn't the MCV pump itself, it could be uh, these seals on the TA shaft. This one is, these are uh, steel seals and their pressures were good and the seals are good, but sometimes they're all messed up. I'm in the midst of cleaning everything and I have my transmission brake arm cover here. I'm going to replace the O-ring. Uh, what will happen is the leak rate out of your transmission shaft there. Pop that snap ring off. Take a mega nut. Pull that pin out. Grab the correct tool. Wood roof again. That right there is the o-ring that we will be replacing and putting it back together then. There's enough material on there to stop a couple more revolutions. Looks like it's a little wet back there so we're going to be replacing the engine seal I imagine and the clutch so yeah. Wasn't able to film it. We had some riffraff in the shop but essentially what I did was drill the hole into the seal, put a screw in there, pop the seal out and then the wiring took a uh, chisel, a rounded chisel popped her out. Now this is what we got going on. Could also just put bolts in the crank holes and suck it in, but this is what I'm doing. I'm going to pop the old quill out of, out of the housing and show you just how fun it is to put a new one in. It's quite fun.
was that was pretty fun. That was one of the fun parts. So, as luck would have it, this one comes with the bearings installed. That's pretty cool. Sometimes they don't. Okay. Put in some quality grease. Because the stuff that comes with it is garbage. Take that snap ring off, kind of like so, like that so. Put in some quality grease. Because the stuff that comes with it is garbage. Like so. Voila, we have a brand new quill installed. Beautiful. So I'm taking my bolt out that was holding the quill to the TA. So, now this housing here, I can see it, I can spin it. I can see, but can you see? It's so jacked. This housing, which is the quill under here, you can see it's spinning. That's good that it's spinning. Uh, but we need to shim that quill uh, it comes with a piece of paper, it should say. I think it's five to twenty-five thousand. So we will stick our contraption on there. It had four shims on the old TA. But you never can trust that because sometimes they're just put together comes with shims and gaskets and people just put them in not knowing quite what they're for. So I always just take them off and start over. I'm thinking this one's going to be a tad loose. I'm due for a loose one. We've all been just right lately. All right. Ooh. So I'll just take a little hammer. Give that a tap. Try to clean your hammer before you do that. Give that a tap so we know the quill is all the way down. Put our gauge on. Okay, here's the setup. The gauge is practically zeroed. 
Close enough for this. Got two bolts here. I'm going to draw up evenly or even unevenly. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, okay. So we went to 10. I was thinking this was going to be at like 30. Sweet. This thing might be good. Sorry for the shaky camera. Wow, we're happy with that. Looks like it's at about six or seven thousandths. So that is good. I'm going to uh, put the rest of the bolts in here and continue on. Just one more swirly pop. Ah. Mm. Ah. Now we're going to install the lower speed gears. comes this handy dandy box inside of the box their new TA gear matched to the TA Got a new lock washer and I just goobed on a whole bunch of Loctite. I just yoinked the three oil tubes out of the side here. An o ring goes there, an o ring goes there. And you just shove them back in, grease them up, shove them back in. And the link so Check out those rollers, they're good. Shove them in there. They can kind of only go. I'm ready to hook this back up here. I got a brand new gasket. A brand new, very overly greased O-ring. And uh, I'm going to give that bearing a grease. Inside of there, maybe a grease or two. I should tie up all that stuff there as it would make it much easier, but apparently I just don't feel the need to do that, so wish me luck. Now that it is back together, Obviously gonna throw the bolts in it Hook everything that I can back together up top Should be able to put the MCV pump on Put my PTO drive gear in I'll probably I don't know if I have one, but We'll come back to that Because you gotta know how to put the seal in Or it'll just leak on you but other than that, looking good. There's our new engine seal. 
It almost looks like it went in too far. But it will be perfectly fine. <clears throat> so, on your PTO drive gear, you got that seal in there. And it's down a certain depth. It can actually go further. I see this one actually has two seals stacked on top of each other, which is not a bad thing. Uh, but you have to be careful. You do not want to just bottom those seals out. You can see whoever put that one in just smashed the shit out of it. But if you push your seal in too far, it will not ride on that shoulder there. It'll actually be out here, so you're just gonna be dumping oil right into this housing. So, just make sure to measure, check that. Actually, I can give you a measurement. I'm getting ready to install the MCV pump back onto the tractor. Uh, because the pressures were good, I'm not going to monkey any with uh, any of the internals of the MCV pump. Uh, what I did do though was I replaced the TA valve o-ring and the dump valve seal. Just because on this 1086, they're kind of hard to get to with the fuel tank and the battery box. Another thing I did was I measured my MCV pump gasket. This one's 15 thousandths. They either come with a 15 thousandths or a 20 thousandths. And that shims the pump gear to the PTO driven gear. So it's kind of important to uh, put the brake gasket back in. All right. Then I'm going to torque all of the bolts to 20 or 25 foot pounds. You don't just want to crank them in. That would, that is just not good to do. When installing that bottom cover, there are two different size square o-rings use the I'm gonna use the correct one and I'm gonna put the correct bolts back in as you can see that yellow nylon dot there that's where those bolts go alright this is the hose clamp that holds the TA together right now is a perfect time to Take that right off of there and put it on the hose clamp rack. Here we go. Score. I just pulled this PTO drive gear out of the box and somebody already installed a seal for us. I'm not sure where this what the history is behind this particular one, but usually they do not come with a seal. Uh, some people might look at that and say, wow, whoop de doo sweet, I have a seal installed in my PTO drive gear, I don't need to install one in there. But, this one is bottomed out, all the way, whoever put it in, put it all the way to the bottom. What will happen is, it will come over here, You'll slide that on there and your seal is going to be so far down in there it's not going to ride on that shoulder. It's going to ride past the shoulder and she's just going to be, uh, she's going to be dumping oil out of the center section. So I can either take that out and drive in a seal to the correct depth or just stack one on top of it, which the easier thing to do would just be to, uh, what the fuck of shit. The easier thing to do would be just to stack another seal on top of it, which is perfectly fine to do. 
But that is the driver that you're supposed to use. And I'll take a measurement of that so you know the correct depth. So I'm measuring, so I'm measuring to the top of the seal. To be on the safe side, I would not go past that. I still have the old seal in there. I'm just stacking this one on top. Because it is just fine to do that. We have double the protection going on in there. Very satisfied with that. Pop that seal out. Time to pop that seal in. Almost the one chump pump, one pump chump. Little ladybug in there. Get out of there, you bastard. Got rid of him, time to move on. Woo! Okay, so that bearing is not supposed to slide on that easily. I'm going to definitely put some Loctite on there. You can actually see that bearing is pitted, getting pretty bad. But you could mar up the shaft I suppose I might do that definitely gonna add some Loctite on there all right I have everything super duper clean I'm gonna glob the heck out of this stuff onto the bearing My goodness gracious, you fuck. There we go, we got our oozing. Took me a while to find this retaining compound that I'm using. Thought the bandits came in and took it. Thought we were robbed. Okay. I'm gonna take my slightly clean finger and try to rub it into all the pores in the pits. Get around there. Do like that. Some people may not. I do. Like a couple morons, we have our bearing upside fucking down. That's pretty cool. Okay, snap ring.
Mm. I'll fucking get ya. Boom. Looking pretty sweet. That's cool. We got that greased. Pop that in there. Voila. Then we have our new ore in here. And we're ready to put this into the tractor. That's greased in there. That's greased there. Oh, you fucker. She's up. She's in. We'll get her bolted tight. Make sure to grease them o rings. Can make sure our zerkuses are zerking. That one's zerking. Give that guy there a little bit of grease. Got the brand new pilot bearing. Looks like it'll fit the flywheel good. And she's gonna fit on there very snug. Just so we are aware of that when it goes together. It might take a little bit. Clutch is bolted on. Uh, if you're one of those guys who's just uber particular about everything and uh, everything has to be perfect, you may find yourself measuring these arms and you'll notice, oh my gosh, they're not even, they're not all at the same height. Well, that is because they're not supposed to be. So just don't let that bug you. The reason they're not at the same height is because you don't want them to release at the same time. You do not want that. You want them to gradually release. When they gradually release, you'll have a smooth takeoff.
Took off the spike over here, looked up in there, made a little adjustment. Slowly working in. Just got all the bolts tight, got my jack back here. I always kind of like to have the jack in the back so the front's always free floating hanging so everything can snug up nicely. We are coming along with our repair. We got the fuel blood, we got oil in it, and a brand new oil filter. Next we're going to adjust the clutch. So, boom, the clutch is all the way up. We're going to take this link here. Shit. And this was out of adjustment, so usually they're not. But you just want to have it so this pin goes through that arm freely, which right now it does not. Holy shit, this is difficult. Bear with me. Okay, how about that? Still not quite there. Jesus. Oh my gosh. My fucker. That'll do. Okay. That's great. So, what you want the end result to be is this pin just to move freely through there just like that. Now we're going to put our cotter key in, tighten the jam nut. The next adjustment you'll I'll make is with that turnbuckle there, you want this arm to be 90 degrees with the tractor, which it actually looks like it is, so I will not be making that adjustment because it's fantastic. Then the next adjustment is you come in here, see there's that arrow there. You want to measure from that part of the pedal to inside that hole there. Damn it. Okay, I have my light. You want to measure from the arrow to inside of that dimple right there to the metal. And you take that measurement and you subtract an inch and a half. And that is where you will want your free play to be. So let's say from there to there is four inches. Right there, I want it to be two and seven eighths inches. And if it's not, I make that adjustment right here. You take out that jam bolt in there, which there's supposed to be one. This one, I'll have to put one in there, but you loosen that and you make your adjustment here with your screwdriver. And what that does is that pulls this arm and adjusts how far away your release bearing is from your clutch. The free play on my pedal is adjusted correctly. Now I have the pedal all the way down. Next I'm going to adjust the dump valve under here. So with the pedal all the way down, the dump valve should be out 3 eighths of an inch. To adjust that, you adjust that nut there. And then after that, we'll do the TA. So with the lever all the way up. There is a snap ring on top of the valve that should be all the way down. TA back from the top of this to the bottom of the snap ring should be an inch and an eighth. So this is my measuring stick here. So from the bottom to the well, from the bottom of the snap ring to the top of that should be an inch and an eighth. 
The snot is an inch and a eighth, as you can see, the valve is not coming up far enough. So, you want to pull it up a little bit. That clamp is loose. If, let's say, you needed to adjust your TA valve, you do that with this turnbuckle here. Up, down, whatever direction you need to go. Yep. Uh-huh. All right, it's time to fire this hussy up. I'm putting a new o-ring in here. I must have put the wrong one in. But anywho, our pressures remain the same rate at 250, which is just fine for this. Our lube pressure was reading 18, which is fantastic. So we're good to go.